Welcome to part five. We're now really in the heart of the old tower and this of course is the royal bedchamber um, and this was on the first floor of the tower and the way you came into the house was via this little door in the corner um, and you can see there's a very steep spiral staircase here which comes directly into the room originally from the outside. Now as you were winding your way up the stair you can see it's built as a spiral so you were unable to draw your sword as you came up and as you came in you were bending down so it was built really for defensive purposes so you could be disposed of quite quickly if you were an unwelcome guest. And then on the right hand side, um, probably a little later in the history, it was a, a privy of some sort, it's now um, a powder closet and it was for gentlemen to powder their wigs so they didn't get powder all over the room. And over here we have of course the famous bed, um, the bed which Mary Queen of Scots slept in when she came here in 1566 with her husband Darnley. They were on a hunting expedition at the time, um, but she also brought with her her baby son who was the future James I of England and VI of Scotland. And we're lucky enough to have his cradle here as well. Her visit was really well documented. In fact, John, the Laird of Traquair, was the captain of her bodyguard. So there was a very strong connection with Mary. But when they came here, apparently Mary felt she may have been pregnant again. And over dinner, she whispered to her husband, could she be excused going on the hunting expedition the following day? But in a very loud voice, and so everybody could hear around the table, Darnley apparently said, but ought not we to work her mare well when she's in full? And this was considered obviously incredibly rude, and he was rebuked by the Laird of Traquair for acting in a most unchristian-like manner. So sadly, I don't think that Mary probably had a very happy stay at Traquair. And on the bed itself, you can see there is a really beautiful um, silk hand embroidered quilt, which is from the early 17th century. And on the wall over here, we have a portrait of Lady Anne Seton. And she was married to the uh, second Earl of Traquair and a very strong Catholic lady. She managed to convince her husband on his deathbed to return to the true faith. Um, she was determined to bring her son up as a Catholic as well. Uh, remember, this is in the middle of the 1660s, and so this was probably the most dangerous time to convert back to Catholicism. However, she was very determined. You can see from her face, she looks quite a formidable lady. And it was really due to her that the house's Catholic history survived. And finally, here on the wall, we have a wonderful example of early 18th century cruel work, which is really part of the most incredible history of textiles and collection of textiles that we have at Traquair. And we're going to see some more of our needlework upstairs in part six. And the way we're going to get there is up the original stairs. So if you would like to follow me, we'll go to the next room.